Hi, this is Professor Poyo, and I'm going to model for you the read aloud assignment for this course. I want you to choose a book that you enjoy, one that you um, will be able to give some expression to, and just read it. That's all you need to do for this assignment. Now, in the classroom, when you perform a read aloud, though, there's other things that you would do in addition to reading the book. For instance, you'd start off by just asking your students whether or not they can even see the book from where they're sitting. That's really important. Um, you might also ask a question to get them engaged in whatever the book is that you're going to start reading. You may also ask questions during the reading and after, but for this assignment, all I want you to do is make sure that in the video I can see you, at least in the beginning, that you introduce the book and that we can see you or hear you and see the pages of the book. That's really important for the video. All right, so here we go. Two Bad Ants by Chris Van Allsburg. The news traveled swiftly through the tunnels of the ant world. A scout had returned with a remarkable discovery, a beautiful sparkling crystal. When the scout presented the crystal to the ant queen, she took a small bite and then quickly ate the entire thing. She deemed it the most delicious food she had ever tasted. Nothing could make her happier than to have more, much more. The ants understood. They were eager to gather more crystals because the queen was the mother of them all, and her happiness made the whole ant nest a happy place. <laughs> okay. It was late in the day when they departed. Long shadows stretched over the entrance to the ant kingdom. One by one, the insects climbed out, following the scout who had made it clear there were many crystals where the first had been found, but the journey was long and dangerous. They marched into the woods that surrounded their underground home. Dusk turned to twilight, twilight to night. The path they followed twisted and turned every bend, leading them deeper and deeper into the dark forest. More than once, the line of ants stopped and anxiously listened for the sounds of hungry spiders. But all they heard was the call of crickets echoing through the woods like distant thunder. Dew formed on the leaves above, and without warning, huge cold drops fell on the marching ants. A firefly passed overhead that, for an instant, lit up the woods with a blinding flash of blue-green light. At the edge of the forest stood a mountain. The ants looked up and could not even see its peak. It seemed to reach right to the heavens, but they did not stop. Up the side they climbed, higher and higher. The wind whistled through the cracks of the mountain's face. The ants could feel its force bending their delicate antenna. Their legs grew weak as they struggled upward. At last, they reached a ledge and crawled through a narrow tunnel. Do you know where they are? When the ants came out of the tunnel, they found themselves in a strange world. Smells they had known all their lives, smells of dirt and grass and rooting plants had vanished. There was no more wind and most puzzling of all, it seemed like the sky was gone. They crossed smooth, shiny surfaces and then followed the scout up a glassy, curved wall. They had reached their goal. From the top of the wall, they looked below to a sea of crystals. One by one, the ants climbed down into that sparkling treasure. they each chose a crystal and then turned to start the journey home. There was something about this unnatural place that made the ants nervous. In fact, they left in such a hurry that none of them even noticed the two small ants 
who stayed behind. Why go back? One asked the other. This place may not feel like home, but look at all these crystals. You're right, said the other. We can stay here and eat this tasty treasure every day forever. So the two ants ate crystal after crystal until they were so full they couldn't even move and they fell asleep. Do you know where they are? Daylight came. The sleeping ants were unaware of changes taking place in their newfound home. A giant silver scoop hovered above them and then plunged deep into the crystals. It shoveled up both ants and crystals and carried them high into the air. The ants were wide awake when the scoop turned, dropping them from a frightening height. They rumbled through space in a shower of crystals and fell into a boiling brown lake. Then the giant scoop stirred violently back and forth. Crushing waves fell over the ants. They paddled hard to keep their tiny heads above water, but the scoop kept spinning that hot brown liquid. Around and around and around it went, creating a whirlpool that sucked the ants deeper and deeper. They both held their breaths and finally bobbed up to the surface, gasping for air and spitting mouthfuls of this terrible, bitter water. Then the lake tilted and began to empty into a cave. The ants could hear the rushing water and felt themselves pulled toward the pitch black hole. Suddenly, the cave disappeared and the lake became calm. The ants swam to the shore and found that the lake had steep sides. They hurried down the walls that held back the lake and the frightened insects looked for a place to hide worried that the giant scoop might shovel them up again. Close by, they found a huge round disc with holes that could neatly hide them. Do you know what that could be? But as soon as they had climbed inside, their hiding place was lifted, tilted, and lowered into a dark space. And when the ants came when the ants climbed out of the holes, they were surrounded by a strange red glow. It seemed to them that every second the temperature was rising. It soon became so unbearably hot that they thought they would soon be cooked. But suddenly, the disc they were standing on rocketed upward, and the two hot ants went flying through the air. They, looked near, they landed near what seemed to be a fountain, a waterfall pouring from a silver tube. Both ants had a powerful thirst and longed to dip their feverish heads into the refreshing water. They quickly climbed along the tube. As they got closer to the rushing water, the ants felt a cool spray. They tightly gripped the shiny surface of the fountain and slowly leaned their heads into the falling stream. But the force of the water was much too strong. The tiny insects were pulled off the fountain and plunged down into a wet, dark chamber. They landed on half-eaten fruit and other soggy things. Suddenly the air was filled with a loud, frightening sound. The chamber began to spin. Do you know where they are? The ants were caught in a whirling storm of shredded food and stinging rain. And then just as quickly as it had started, the noise and spinning stopped. Bruised and dizzy, the ants climbed out of the chamber. In daylight, once again, they raced through puddles and up a smooth metal wall. In the distance, they saw something comforting. Two long, narrow holes that reminded them of the warmth and safety of their old underground home. They climbed up into the dark openings. 
But there was no safety inside these holes. A strange force passed through the wet ants. They were stunned, senseless, and blown out of the holes like bullets from a gun. When they landed, the tiny insects were too exhausted to go on, so they crawled into a dark corner and fell fast asleep. Night had returned when the battered ants awoke to a familiar sound, the footsteps of their fellow insects returning for more crystals. The two ants slipped quietly to the end of the line. They climbed the glassy wall and once again stood amid the treasure. But this time, they each chose a single crystal and followed their friends home. Standing at the edge of their ant hole, the two ants listened to the joyful sounds that came from below. They knew how grateful their mother queen would be when they gave her their crystals. And at that moment, the two ants felt happier than they'd ever felt before. This was their home. This was their family. And this was where they were meant to be. The end. Thank you.